paradigm shift. An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. A genuine expression. A certain Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, two egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect, your common Gilbert style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be you to the fullest. Hello there. Hey. So, all right, yeah, my friend's daughter, she's so quiet. She doesn't, like, she talks when she's spoken to. You know, but otherwise she just, like, sits there quietly. And if she has something she wants to share with me, she certainly will. But otherwise she just, you know, she minds her P's and Q's. So I find myself trying to, like, pull her out of her shell. You know? Are you there? I'm here. The universe is just hitting okay. me with multiple things at once. I'm trying to do multiple things at once. You and Katerina are trying to talk to me at exactly the same time. Okay. Well, how about you go talk to Katerina and then um, so, I'm driving anyway. Oh, um... Well, we can... I just have you on the car phone. That's fine. We can, you... we can remain on the line. Just let go and go with the flow. I'm not shooing you away. Oh, I didn't say that. I was just um, being a considerate friend and letting you know you're not obligated to talk to me right at this moment because I am doing something else, too. So, if you wanted to give Katarina all of your attention, uh, <laughs> it's uh, as a friend for both of you. How about that? Well, I choose right now to split my attention because she's talking to me in text, which means she can't make immediate responses anyway. Oh, okay. And if she okay. decides okay. she wants to go voice, I can always merge the call unless she has an objection. Sounds good to me. I'm taking things as they come. No micromanagement. <laughs> yes, yes, I realize. And I'm, I guess it's just a lazy... I don't know, I don't mean what they lazy, but it's like I'm finding myself slipping back into whole old habits quickly and unexpectedly, and they, and I'm, you know, and it's like, you know, swift with the vengeance, and it's like, hits me out of nowhere, and then I don't really, you know, I justify it by saying, okay, well, I just need a break from everybody, you know, the world's been too loud, well, and then I, I know it's been like freaking weeks. All you got to do is catch it, don't judge it when you catch it, and if you don't judge it, you can immediately hit the pause button on it. It can only co-opt you if you judge it. Ooh, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, because you know, and you don't even realize that you're doing it, in the, you know. Well, uh, technically... We do realize it, but the second we realize it, we push it back and go into denial because the first thing that comes up is, oh, my God, I'm doing this again. I should know better. I thought I was beyond this. What's wrong with me? So then the ego wants to justify it and try to align it with some paradigm shifting thing like, oh, no, I didn't recognize an old pattern coming back up. What it really was is I'm just giving myself permission and sovereignty to be myself and do this, this and this that way. And we tell ourselves a little new agey bullshit story. And when really it's just a, a, a repulsion mechanism because we have successfully identified the pattern in the moment and we went into shame and rejection about it instead of looking at it and going, oh, I'm doing this again. I don't prefer to do this, so I am now going to do something else. That's called hitting the pause button. Oh, no. 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 Oh,
Yeah, and you know, the one thing I've realized is that in my effort to, and it's really not even an effort, I guess, it's just like my nature is to like really relate to people and feel what they're feeling, and it's been my entire life that I've succumbed to that feeling and accepting it as my own when it hasn't been. And so now it's, you know, it's an effort of, you know, a little bit of that, of recognizing that it's not really my feelings that I'm feeling because, you know, I'm getting emotions and feelings from all kinds of people who aren't even, you know, in my, you know, mm-hmm. what, within my physical reality at the moment, like, you know, like Mike. But, you know, it, uh, but, it, but, it's me. but at the same time, even though they're not your emotions and you're picking them up from others, they are still a reflection of paradigms inside of you that you have been avoiding facing. That's another thing the, the ego um, likes to reject and go into new agey mode about. As soon as you realize you're, you're empathic and can pick up other people's emotions, then all of a sudden you go into self-victimization and denial. Like, oh, they're other people's, so that can't have anything to do with me. Well, granted, they are other people's, but, you know, that's like saying, oh, well, heads is head and tails is tails. They're two separate things. They can't be a part of one coin. I have to ignore the coin. That can't exist. That coin is inconvenient. Um, and uh, Katerina wants to climb on board this call, so... Um, one moment. I'll okay. Merge her in. Okay. Do 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 do. Scroll down the list. Katarina Edwards. Cell phone ad. And here we go. having this very specific type of moment lately. As a matter of fact, I've had to constantly reference back a video that you did, Katerina. Which one? The one where you were talking about how you're, sometimes you get hard on yourself because you expect yourself to remember everything you've ever learned about everything about paradigm shifting and you get mad at yourself because you're not a robot and then you go into the little thing saying, when you were a kid, you kind of wished you were a robot. <laughs> yeah. You know, that one. yeah, so I kind of, you know, I referenced that back. Although before I could mention that video in this call to Daphne, you kind of, you know, merged in with us before I could get to that. So now I'm getting to that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, good. I'll have to, I have to go watch that video. Yeah, it's just, and you know what, and that's something uh, I was well, looking I'll to. to you. <laughs> I'll relo- I'll locate it for you and I'll send it to you later. Cool. Um, you know, I heard something in one of my uh, learnings with Mike Dooley yesterday. I just started listening to it over, and he was talking about, you know, how we choose our emotions, we choose how we react to things, and, you know, we choose depression, we choose to feel awful, we choose these things, not necessarily because we, I mean, we really want to deep down, but we, we do it because we feel like we have to, like it's the expected response. Like, if you break up with somebody, then you've got to be heartbroken and mourn them for a little while. And if you don't, then you are being sensitive and you're all of this other thing. And but really, it's just talking to an old story and choosing. And I, I feel like that's where, um, you know, my empathic side uh, challenges me a lot because that's I have to rise above that a, the feeling that's, of... That's been a big issue in the truth movement lately, uh believe it or not, that that idea of choice, because when I start talking about how, you know, it's um, it's a dichotomy and both us and the elites hold, you know, each our own responsibilities and that we are choosing to allow psychopaths to rule over us. People's first reactions is, oh no, I didn't, I didn't make that choice. Other people chose for me. I, I didn't, I didn't make that choice. I never would have made that choice. I, and and I, I was, I was tricked. And this is the matrix we're living in. And blah blah blah. And I'm like, look, if you're on the bridge, you're on the bridge. 
doesn't matter how you got onto the bridge. If you're standing on the bridge, it's kind of stupid to look around and go, nope, I'm not on a bridge right now. No, no, no. Close your eyes and cover your eyes and go, la, 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 I'm not listening. I'm not on a bridge. Well, we're, we've made these choices. So it's like standing on the choice bridge and going, nope, nope, I'm not on the choice bridge. I, I was tricked. I was hoodwinked. It was it was snuck from under me. I didn't make the choice. It's like, well, yes, you made the choice. It doesn't matter that you were tricked into making the choice or if you were programmed subconsciously into making the choice. It's still you making the choice, regardless of the process of how that came about. It's still you making the choice. And once you own that, then you could start moving into more productive change. So that's been a huge issue People in the truth movement not wanting to own that idea that, hey, they've made the choices and that regardless of the fact that they're awake and aware to whatever point they're, they're pointing at the globalists and whatever, it's like the globalists aren't at fault. They're simply responsible for what they've done and we're responsible for what we've done. And, you know, it's about, it's about owning that. And, ooh, they hate to hear that from me. They really hate to hear that from me. Oh, for sure, because now there's nobody to blame their life on, you know, having to take personal responsibility. And I get all, you know, like the let go and let God thing. And it's like, well, you know, people take that totally the wrong way because they're like, oh, well, God will take care of it and not doing anything about it or really realizing that God isn't outside of them somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh you know, because I, I see that so much, like, especially over freaking Easter weekend, you know. I'm pretty sure that, like, if half of my friends list knew what kind of, like, really what kind of church I go to and what I believe, that they would defriend me because they're so, like, Jesus, you know, Jesus is the way and and all of this and, you know, just, you know, yeah. putting everything on Jesus, poor guy. <laughs> well, you, you know, know, but, well, you know, Jesus was was a teacher and it's it's funny i know a lot of a lot of non-christians that are more more christian than most christians because right. they, they look at christ's teachings as, as what christ was meaning them to be and really looking at what jesus was saying whereas all the so-called christians they're they just believe the idiot on the pulpit they believe that if you believe in the social title of christ then you're in with this in crowd, and you're not going to get sent to the penalty box called. Don't really pay attention to anything Jesus ever said about anything. It's just like it's just like like Harry Potter for the sake of liking Harry Potter. But you know, it doesn't even matter if you don't watch the movie. Just if you say Harry Potter's cool, then you're cool because you're saying he's cool, right along with all these other people saying he's cool. So you know, and it's just it's that level right. of stupidity. Right. Yeah, I want a Jesus is my homeboy shirt. <laughs> that pisses people off so much. Yeah, no, it. You know, it's just. Silas, what are you doing? Get in the house. I gotta run away. He's like, literally, he's like running away outside. <laughs> you want to beat mommy to the house? Yeah. Okay, go beat me. Beat me. Oh, you win. That's all he wanted. He wanted to win. <laughs> Beat you with a but, uh, Beat you with a metal baton. Yeah. Oh, um, the car keys are in the car. I can. Uh, let me. I'll go take them out. Um. But um. Yeah. But anyway, it's just been one of those things. You know, like I feel like every time that I'm really like harnessing my um, you know, I, I guess my inner power is really the word, but doing, you know, taking steps towards what I w really want to do, then it's like, you know, I get all of these, well, you know, it can just wait. Things don't matter. That's what I'm getting a lot of resistance from right now. The, you know, everything matters, but nothing matters. It's kind of like, thought? it's kind of like, the key is to accept yourself fully in the moment. So if you're shunning any part of yourself, you're not accepting yourself fully in the moment, and that creates a negative feedback loop oscillation cloud. Um, a mental fog is kind of like a literal fog. You can't speed down the street with sick fog. And it doesn't really matter what's down the street. Whatever's down the street is down the street. 
Um, and the fact is, is that if there's no fog, you can see it, and if there is a fog, you cannot. So, I mean, I, I, I think you, you get my point here. Yeah. So if you're creating this mental fog, it doesn't really matter what is and, and what isn't, what's not productive, what is productive. All of the concerns you're having about everything are completely irrelevant while you're oscillating the fog because it doesn't change the fact that you can't do anything if you can't have clarity. That makes sense. It makes, that makes a lot of sense. In... So when you just accept yourself in the moment, full-on neurosis and all, instead of fighting it, just accept it. And by accepting, I don't mean, oh, I accept that I'm neurotic. That's the way I'm always going to be. That's not what I mean by acceptance. <laughs> right. No, I, I understand what you mean. It's just the, the fact of, you know, acknowledging what it is, accepting it for what it is, and being okay with it, and then taking steps to adjust. Yeah, and to not fight it. Yeah. Because, it, because it? fighting it is like is like taking wood logs and painting and writing the wood logs and then throwing them into the fire and then wondering why the fire goes out. Yeah. And when I say don't fight it, a lot of people are thinking like, well, well, what? So that means I should just like collapse me and and not face it. All right? No, that's not what I mean. I mean, if you don't fight it, so that you let the fog clear, that means whatever it is you have to do to contend with it, you can only know what to do when you have clarity. For as long as you don't have clarity, you're just like you're you're just stabbing in the dark. You know, you don't you don't even know what at or whether you're going to hit or hit or miss or anything. If you're if you're just blindly around, nothing to do in that state is matter. Hell, try driving with a blindfold. See how quickly you get killed. You know. So I mean, yeah. You got to take the blindfold off first. Yeah, and it you know it surprises me that you know. Like it, this, I mean, this must be just a huge part of you know my my old story coming up and things that I just obviously have not fully completely adjusted to. Because it just it it really does seem kind of silly to me that I'm still experiencing this type of stuff, and I don't feel bad about it. Like I don't feel like you know like oh I can't believe I'm still experiencing this. Well, you know I thought I was over this. No, I mean I'm definitely past that stage of Hey Daphne, I have a question. Daphne? Hello? Daphne? Hello Daphne? Did she leave? I don't know. She's still connected on the call. I just don't hear her. Oh, okay. It says she's still connected anyway. If she's in the process of getting disconnected, then I'll know soon because her little connection thingy on my end will drop off. But, um, yeah, we're not hearing her. Oh, and she's gone. Um, I have to try to call her back because she apparently had her call drop. Mm-hmm. Let me see here. Add phone. Well, I guess that's why there's silence on the line, huh? Yeah, the call dropped. As a matter of fact, I was at, I was saying, hey, Daphne, can I ask you something? And then there was silence. Yeah. And then I'm like, Daphne, can I ask you something? And there was silence. I'm like, Daphne, hello, Daphne. Oh, I'm like, weird. Nobody there. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> I'm moving into the podcast arena. So I was actually working on my schedule. I have to come up with like 40 episodes. Um for what I want to do. Um, you guys, hey, shh, shh, stop. Um, but because I want to do a daily podcast. So I'm working, I was actually working on stuff this morning and how I want to lay out the weeks and stuff. So um, I will be requesting both of your presences at periodic times to do, um, you know, 
like interviews and, and things like that. Because I want to do a lot of my own stuff, but I'm finding that to help fill. Fill. Can I make um, a suggestion? Sure. Do it as a YouTube Hangout, and if you want to convert that into an audio-only format as well, that's easy It's easy enough. But the way I see it, why not monetize it and make money from it? I know the old... Absolutely. Te- I know the old... Hey, oh, stop. The, stop. The old paradigm habit says, no, 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 you, you can't do that, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't even think in that direction. But um, I'm, you know, bringing up the elephant in the room and saying, you know... As a matter of fact, I've learned how to uh, link Skype and Google Hangouts together. Cool. Well, good. Then I'll definitely have to talk to you because I what I was definitely wanting to maximize output. So I was even considering. Um, it just it really depends on the audio quality. So if I can get um, what what I'm thinking, and this is um, you know I. Pick up a headset so that the audio from my voice will be picked up, you know, like a microphone. And then, um, you know, but I was considering doing, you know, just even videotaping myself on like a Google Hangout just so that it's automatically recorded on YouTube. But, um, but yeah, no, I was definitely thinking it just depends on how much editing I want to do. I really want to do minimal editing, but podcasts are like. Um, well, that's the cool thing about Google Hangouts. Not only is there no editing involved, but if you want to move it to an audio-only format, you just extract the audio from the video. Okay, and do they have that set up to do that automatically, or do I have to get, or, or am I going to have to go all, like, ninja I, hacker to no, extract it? It's very easy, and I can teach you. Just because it's new cool. information that you have to learn does not mean it has to be hard. Even though you have paradigms that say, oh, I don't know it, and it's about computers, so computers must equal difficulty. Oh, no, it's got to be hard. Oh, you know what? I don't don't have a problem with computers at all. I don't, you know, it's just a matter of, okay, well, is that possible? Yeah, you know how to do it? Okay, well, show me. I'm not going to spend more time trying to figure it out for myself, and that's just, that's what I don't like doing. (laughs) But if you know, I can totally learn, and I will let you teach me. For sure. there's, well, there's a middle a middle ground on that. You know, there's some people that that think, oh, well, you know, I can't, I have to learn everything myself because that's the only way to be sovereign. So I can't have anybody teach me anything. And then there's there's people, you know, totally to the opposite. The middle ground is how about just sharing tools and having faith in your ability to learn and use them. Because people don't realize, like when they when they shut people out, like, oh, I'm going to learn it all on myself. Well, if you're going to learn things yourself, that's fine. But even in learning yourself, you're still learning from some resource. Somehow, absolutely, you're using resources. So you know, I would rather have a live resource personally because yeah. you know, I just you know, I've I've learned that a lot of the processes and things that they put out are they dumb them down. So much I spend more time <laughs> yeah reading the damn instructions and like going that way than if I could just reach out to somebody who already knows what they're doing and I can just learn from that I, I learn much quicker when I have somebody right there you know helping me through it so it's like you know I'll have you show me and then I'll do it and then I'll have you help me people also have have this way of thinking to where they think that um if they uh, if they get help from anyone on anything, then it makes them weak, and it means they're no longer sovereign, and it means they're codependent. If they're codependent, then they're falling into the trap of the globalists and the Illuminati, and so that means they're assisting evil. So if they don't completely abandon everyone and everything and go off into the wilderness, metaphorically speaking, with nothing but a Bowie knife and a backpack and do absolutely everything themselves with no help whatsoever, then if they don't live their life as a, as a hermit, then, you know, they're committing some sort of evil and assisting the globalists and destroying the world. And it's all completely neurotic because being independent yeah. doesn't mean you shut everybody out and, and and nobody works with you and you don't work with anybody. Being independent just means that you're only able to work with other independent people. You wouldn't have a bunch of six-year-olds rebuild the World Trade Center. That wouldn't go over well. But you'd have people that are qualified to do it do that, wouldn't you? Yeah. So people who yeah, no, are codependent absolutely. are just like those three-year-olds. There's a difference yeah. between codependence and independence, but independence doesn't mean, oh, I can't work with anybody. 
Yeah, and that's, you know, and that's, is Katarina still on the phone? I do believe she's here. It doesn't say she's gone anywhere. Yeah, I'm okay. here. Okay, okay. Just, you know, you just listen in, so, you know, just want to make sure you're still here because I'm going to say so long. She's just sitting here um, relating to everything we're saying. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, and it and it makes a lot of sense because I'm finding that, you know, I'm, I do want to reach out to people for assistance. I, you know, more so than usual, yeah. and it's, you know, it is, it's, you know, it's proving to be very, very helpful, and I don't, you know, I realize that I have been so used to doing everything for myself, by myself, with myself. I've that also noticed there's also a strong resistance against that in people because there's so many of these fake gurus out there that they act like they want to help people but what they really want to do is get people under their control so that nobody's making a move without the guru's permission and there's a lot of people that don't want to get into that trap and they're afraid that if they if they seek help externally for anything then they're going to end up controlled by some guru and going crazy and whatever so people are oh, all afraid yeah. of that. yeah and you know and i you know, I know one big thing that I've been breaking from is the, uh, like, desire to do it, like, the right way, which would be, like, the way that everybody else says that something needs to be done, mm -hmm. because that was something that always ingrained me as a kid. Even my dad's like that now. Like, he got, I, I don't know, he gets so uptight about offending people. He ends up offending people even more mm -hmm. by, by, not, by trying to not offend them. You know, and, um, exactly. You know, and it's like, so, I mean, even to see things like he said something to me about, um, not he, letting the, the kids being, do something. He, he ends up being extremely patronizing. He what? Ends up being extremely patronizing in his efforts to not offend anybody. Absolutely. And, you know, or just like, you know, when I tell him that something is completely, perfectly acceptable and it's okay at this particular place, like some, I can't remember what it was. It was something that wouldn't normally be appropriate for kids somewhere else. We were at Chuck E. Cheese, and so it's like, well, whatever. I mean, this is where they're supposed to do that stuff. Like, they're, the people who work here are expecting those children to do whatever it is they're going to do. Like, so why are you getting so upset about them doing that thing? Like, they're going to get in trouble. They're not going to. They're allowed to do that. You know, those types of things. Hey, guys. What's up, yeah. Katarina? Hey, I need to get going. Um, I didn't realize you guys were in the middle of a conversation, so I'll catch up with both of y'all later. Okay. Well, I did. I did kind of tell you that we were in the middle of a conversation, and I asked if you wanted in, and you said sure. Oh, I thought it was like the beginning of a conversation. I'm gonna let you guys go. Keep talking. Have fun, Daphne. I hope you're doing better a little bit later, but uh, I have to get on with my day. Love you guys. All right. And talk to you all later. Catch you Love you. Bye. 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 Love you too. Bye. Bye. Yeah, I know what you mean. As a matter of fact, recently, um, you know, I've been thinking about, like, you know, there's, it's just kind of like thinking about in conversations with people lately about the meanings of words. And mm -hmm. I was thinking about the word patronizing. And if you look at the root word. Patron. Uh, yeah, exactly. The root word of patronizing, it's patron. When someone is a patron to a to a business or a customer, how are the employees told to told to talk to them? The, the, their, the employees are taught to always be agreeable to the customer no matter what. Yeah. And and we all know that, that that when an employee is taught to be agreeable with the customer no matter what, that it's fake. The employee is only being agreeable because they are told you have to be agreeable because you work here, and if you're not agreeable, you will get fired. Yeah, the customer is always right. That exactly. So when you patronize somebody, it's just a lack of authenticity. People think that patronize means to be little or treat them like a little kid or something. That's not what patronizing means. Patronizing means to have a fake, a fake positive context to everything and to to act as if the other person could do Mommy. something wrong and it gives them false reassurance. Mommy, that's what patronizing is. 
Yeah, and it, you know. You're yeah, I just, treating someone like a customer at a restaurant like you're going to get fired if you're not agreeable with them. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's just like, you know, it's so overboard. Like, the things that he does to, like, he really does, like, go out of his way and completely, like, inconvenience his own life on behalf of other people. And then, or he'll just... You know, the other side of that is that he just makes false promises that he never intends to keep anyway, but he doesn't tell you that until, like, the last freaking minute, or, yeah, I'll be there at 9 o'clock, and it's 9.30, and he's still not there, and you call him, oh, yeah, I'm on my way. What? You told me you would be here 30 minutes ago, and you haven't even left yet? You know, that kind of thing, And but it, you know, he has a hard time telling everybody no, well, and I realize that it's, still, like... That's still patronizing, oh, that's too. Funny. It's like... It's like talking to a supervisor at a, you know, customer service place and telling them, look, I just talked to four different representatives who kept saying, it's okay, it's not going to be a problem, but here we are, it's still a problem, you know, so it's like these representatives are taught to patronize you and give you false assurances in order to try to keep you from getting angry. So it's like your dad's doing the same thing. Like even if he has no intention of showing up somewhere or whatever, in order to avoid your anger, and your anger he just agrees to something arbitrarily in order to shut you up in that moment. Well, exactly, and that's really what it is. There's a lot of pacifying. Hold on a second, Isaac. This is this is the bowl that you're going to use. It is not a baby bowl. It's actually a Tupperware. Okay, so you can have your cottage cheese in this bowl, or you won't get any at all. Okay, but it, acting like that, I'm just going to put the cottage cheese away because I don't want to help you if you're not going to be nice. I want to tell her a colorful one. A colorful one? Yeah. Well, why don't you ask me nicely for that instead of throwing a fit and, walk, and running off screaming? Mommy, can I have a colorful bowl for me? Oh, okay, sure. Let me see if I got any of those clean. Thanks for asking nicely. <sighs> okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the, by the way, there's um what you messaged me with um I think it was yesterday and um I said that it would be um better to the discuss it in a voice conversation. Um the idea of looking at things so objectively that they lose their meaning and wanting to edit and or delete or or oh look that was just side that you mentioned. Um so adjusting to the fact that choosing feelings and the old patterns and uh, needing to uh, um, choose what you want to feel rather than what you don't want and patterns and so on, um, you know, again, what you said there goes right back to what I was saying earlier as far as that whole thing you said to me, just being you raging against yourself, that new, that new AG, love and light, shun the dark, I need to only choose what I want. It's like it's not quite that simple because a lot of what you think you want is just ego having a temper tantrum. Like, I want this, otherwise, eh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's that's not quite what it's about. It's about accepting yourself fully in the moment because you have no way of even knowing what you want without clarity. It's very true. How it's can, very true. can you even know? You can only think you know based on what society has trained your ego to to tell you. So you're 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 just running back on autopilot, hence the repeating patterns. And if you don't if you don't hit the pause button on this by removing the judgment and go, Okay, I'm in a pattern, I see that, I paused it, now now what what would be better for me to do? What do I want to do? And now that there's clarity, you've hit the pause button, the fog is going away, you can see clearly now that the ego's gone. <laughs> you've calmed everything down, there's clear visibility. Now you can see what you would prefer, and you could see it based on a point of logic. Like, you know, it, uh, fire burns no matter what. So it doesn't matter if you want to stick your hand in the fire or you don't want to stick your hand in the fire. That still doesn't change the nature of fire. Stick your hand in, it's going to burn. That's, you know, there's, there's nothing that's going to change that. Unless, of course, you have your belief system so high that you could be like these fire walkers and just totally like walk through and not get burned. But most of us haven't learned how to do that. So, again, it's also about being honest about 
what what you currently know you are and aren't capable of instead of being like, well, I know what I know about quantum physics, so that means I should be capable of this, this, and this. And if I'm if I find myself not being capable, then I'm a naughty person and I'm doing something wrong and I need to like berate myself about it. And people expect the impossible of themselves. They don't value their process of learning. They expect to plant a tree seed today, have a forty foot tree tomorrow, when it inevitably doesn't happen, they get all poo poo on themselves. Yeah. Where does that, I mean, is that just, why is that instant gratification, is that just because things have been coming quicker physically for us? Like we've been able to, you know, literally manufacture so much so quickly in our technology that we just expect instant, everything else no, the to be. The instant gratification is simply another word for impatience. Um, humanity for thousands of years has been a very impatient society. So it's it's simply impatience. It's the idea of, you know, I expect to be able to do this right freaking now. It's 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 what the school system teaches us to be. That's true. Yeah, if you well, you know, yeah. you think you, you know, the school system says your pace isn't good enough. You have to keep pace with what society expects, otherwise you're going to be a horrible failure and never succeed in life, and you're going to be homeless and starving and sick, and, and you're just going to be a total life failure, and you may as well just go kill yourself, and blah, 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 if you don't meet our standards and do things in exactly our way. Well, that programming, that basic core programming, when you eliminate the, the semantics of school homework deadlines and you just look at the core programming itself, what the core programming says is I have to expect all of the impossible immediately, otherwise I'm an instant failure. And so we perceive the idea of taking time to do anything as a threat. Like, uh-oh, the more time I have to do something, the more opportunity I have to fail and be hurt. Mm. Because, you know, I know that failure and hurt is the only thing I'm capable of because that's what school's told me. It's the only thing I'm capable of. So the more time I actually have to do anything, that means all I'm going to do with that time is be hurt and fail and be hurt some more and fail some more. So I need everything I want right now. I have to know everything right now. I have to be able to do everything right now because time is a monster that will kill you. If anything takes time, it's a threat to my life. And that's how we're trained to think. Yeah, that makes absolute sense. Like, that resonates fully. Yeah. Because it, re it really is like that. Because I really do, you know, a lot of times I do find myself feeling like, you know, like I should have all of this stuff and I should be doing all, you know, like I should have it all. And then, you know, and then there's other moments where, you know, I'm like, okay, well, you know what? I do have this knowledge and I've never harnessed it in this manner before. So why would I know exactly everything I need to do perfectly the first time because I've never done it before? You know, and I shouldn't be expecting perfection, but I should be expecting progress. Well, if you look at our educational system, and you look at the prison system, and you look at the ideology of neo-Nazism, and you look at satanic cults, you will see more similarities than differences. They all follow the same basic procedures, indoctrination and control through fear and pressure and abuse. And even bigger than the external abuses is training a person to automatically abuse themselves, to keep themselves yeah. protect, to police themselves. Reek. Reek. Yeah. Exactly. Game of Thrones. Oh, my gosh. Reek. Like, it just, going from what he was. Yeah. He was to, to he was where he is. Good. He was He won't even leave with his sister. Oh, wait. I didn't. I don't know how far you are. I shouldn't say that. No, but, I'm all the way now. I'm all the way. I'm okay. So he wouldn't even leave with his sister. Like his rescue party came, and he was exactly what you said. Indoctrinated to the point true. where he just kept himself prisoner, and he was so afraid because you know what's his face had already put him through all of that stuff and tricked him so many different times that you know how could this not be a trick? Mm -hmm. You know, it just wasn't possible in his in his reality, and. You know, and obviously he had some like physical repercussions from all of that. But he won't, uh, we won't go into what those are. 
although although the the uh, the one scene where you know that one guy who was torturing him when he was having he was chowing down on a certain particular thing for dinner um i almost wanted to lose my lunch on that scene <laughs> oh gotcha <laughs> oh man i was like are you fucking kidding me oh my yeah. god he's he's like he's sitting there you know that yeah Oh, I mean, I'm yeah. they're thinking, I know it's fake, I know it's just a movie, but still. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, oh. Damn. Yeah, there's some points where I had to, don't you do it? Hold on. Really, funny? Oh. I think maybe it's time for her to go take a nap, yeah? No. Oh, you're going to be nice. What? <laughs> um. I'm teaching him to acknowledge when he's tired. But anyway, so yeah, no, I'm not going into specific details because obviously, because you know, uh, this is going to end up as a PSEC episode, and anybody who hasn't seen Game of Thrones yet, I don't want to like completely give it away. No, yeah, I'm, that's like, true. So kind of talk yeah. just in in a way that you know what I mean. Yeah, I know that was a movie and it was fake, but it's still like, oh god, ew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I felt like that through several different points oh. of watching that show, and it's really the only reason that I'm paying for HBO. Like, it's so worth it every weekend, and then I get to watch some cool movies during the week and whatever, make up for, you know, the subscription that I pay. But yeah, it um, but it is it, like it's really just kind of an extreme look, you know, at. How life really is, and you know something too that I thought about is that it's a global like an, handbook. The reason I was I was told so many times by so many people, if you want to understand the thinking of the elites, watch that movie. So it's a great movie to understand it. It really, really is, and it kind of helps you remove judgments of, of the uh, elites and to be able to see that they're just suffering from their own paradigms. And, you know, I'm not making excuses for them. I'm not saying that they don't deserve every bit of consequence that's going to be coming down the road to them. I'm not, I'm not, you know, sticking up for them. I'm just saying that when we lose the hate and we get rid of the blame game, then we start to understand why they are the way they are. And when you understand your enemy, you can defeat your enemy. When you don't understand your enemy, how are you supposed to combat them? Well, exactly. And they're just a bunch of scared politicians who are trying to scramble for control of things mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and, you know, make sure that they have everything that they want. That's really all it is. There are a few exceptions to that, of course, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just. It's oh, really, when that, when that one chick ends up running into Stannis, that could either end up really good or really bad. I'm not sure which. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He, uh, Stannis is all about doing the right thing no matter what. So I'm very but... interested. But Stannis has a lot of ego in his way. And the one chick is yes. also about doing the right thing no matter what, but she proves that... She, oh, Daenerys. Yes. You're talking about Daenerys. Females have just as much Mother of ego dragons. as males. So if it ends up a battle of the sexes sort of thing, because she's got more compassion than Stannis does. Absolutely. She's, so, she's about the people, and then, you know, whatever is best for the people is how she handles everything else, and Stannis is like, well, what are the rules of the realm, and that's what I'm going to follow, no matter who gets, who or what gets in my way. Exactly. So... He's like, he's like the five-star general of the army who is, you know, doing everything by the book, by the law, and how it should be done, and Mary is over there like, hey, what's the right thing for the people who live here? Like, because yeah. that's who, that, I mean, that's who I represent. Think, I'm on their behalf, so how the can problem? I best benefit them? The, pro you know. the problem I'm foreseeing as being a possibility is she'll run into him, they'll both tell each other their views on things, and she'll be like, all right, I got a big army, you got a big army, we both acknowledge our mutual problem, how about we share rule of this kingdom together? And him being like, no, I am the only heir, it is my birthright, fuck you, no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking, you know, I'm more willing to I think he's smart enough to come together to battle with her rather than against her. 
but ultimately I think you're I think that you're right because Melisan, um, the fire lady, his little consultant, if you will. Yeah, I'm, she I'm, I'm, is. I'm still I'm still trying to figure out whether she's a blessing or a curse. Um, her me- well, I think she's like every other politician, and so her she's just trying to control it. She's just like Littlefinger. Her me- her methods are, are nasty. The you know the one little the the red witch lady that's with Stannis. I mean, she that's her Melisandre. Yeah, she's her methods are nasty, but it's like you know she's she's well intended. So I'm not sh- sure whether or not you know she's gonna end up you know ultimately doing what's right or just being co opted. So I'm. I'm kind of really on the fence about her. Yeah, I feel like she's like the new agey woo woo lady who's using some sort of like God logic mm-hmm. over him to make to manipulate him to do things because it's what God wants or whatever the word is that they use. But you know, he's a very Republican, God fearing man is going to do anything on behalf of what's right and in their world whatever's right is what you know the god desire i mean it's obvious she's been co-opted by some sort of energy or something i'm just trying to figure out that uh, whether or not what energy is working with her if it's if it's going to be uh, if it's going to end up being in everybody's favor or if this thing could end up being like the next yeah because, I mean, this creepy thing makes the freaking white walkers look nice. If it, if it decides to be an enemy. Yeah, yeah, and that's... Yeah, this story is so low and deep. Apparently it takes him five or six years to write a book, or it did the last one. So, uh, I'm, uh, I would really love to talk to him about, you know, like, where his inspiration... Like, if he just kind of, like comes up with it or if it's like okay I don't, I don't even know I don't even know like follow, I don't even know like follow the process there's inspiration he's probably done a research into the whole into a lot of the whole global situation and just been like wow what's everything that's going on in the world wouldn't this make a great book yeah hold on a second oh you're going to be mean now you got to see for cottage cheese and I got you some and I said it on the table so it was still Okay. You want to do it? By, I'm sorry, baby. You want to do it by yourself? Yeah. Well, why don't you ask me nicely instead of yelling? Mommy, what? you want to raise me? Okay. He wants to carry his own cottage cheese to the table. I just had to watch that because he uh, tried to put an open Gatorade bottle on the table, too, which is higher than him. Uh-huh. And so when he went to set it up, it tilted and just covered him in Gatorade. Mm-hmm. You have to sit at the table, baby. We can't sit here and eat, okay? Just going back in there. Let's carry it over the table. Yeah. Well, or I'm going to take it away. Sometimes that's the way he's got to learn his lesson. Yeah. Other, oh, other, for sure. Uh, the Gatorade thing was funny. We were outside, so. <laughs> uh, otherwise, he'll keep trying to do it that way if he's trying to pre- prevent it, and, and he'll just end up driving you nuts. So sometimes yeah. he'll let him learn the lesson. <laughs> then he'll choose of his own accord to not do that. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, Silas, I need you to sit at the table and eat. It's... Okay, I guess I'm burning out then. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. You're obviously tired because you're not being nice at all. Grab me in the face. Yep. <laughs> okay. I'm going to let you go. He's having a difficult time. Now, I really think he's just tired. I'm going to get him calmed down and put him down. Yep. <laughs> being that nasty, screaming, yelling. That's how I know he's tired. He just loses all control of himself. <laughs> yep. Just like, just like Katie. <laughs> yeah. On the floor, screaming, crying, and all that. So... Okay. 
Okay. Where do I have following me into the room? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to let you go. And, uh, and uh, we'll talk later. Sure, so I'll talk to you next time. Okay. I'll talk to you later. All right. Later. Bye. Bye.